Hello everyone, Phil here doing another video tutorial broadcasting from Western Australia. It's quite sunny here, 40 degrees today, uh, but we're having a bit of thunderstorm, should be getting a bit cooler, so I'll fill for you in, in the freezing cold in Europe and other, other countries around the world. So in this video we're looking at Seagate Disc Wizard Starter Edition 10.45. Um, it's another dynamic drive overlay software. Now, I've tested this with Seagate drives, a Western Digital drive and a Compact Flash card. It worked with the Seagate drive, of course, it worked with the Compact Flash card, but it didn't work with the Western Digital drive. In, uh, the uh, screen came up, I'm going to put that in the video. Now, the version number is 10.45, but when you actually later install the program, um, there's another version number, 9.88 and as a date from 2004. Um, either way, this is one of the last, if not the last, um, drive overlay software from, uh, from Seagate. It's based on OnTrack, OnTrack Disk Manager. Now, I'm gonna cover quite a bit in this video. First, I'm just gonna uh, do a bit of introduction while this software is loading. And in the later parts, I'm gonna install, I'm gonna do two installations. The first one is installing MS-DOS 6.22 with a single two gig partition. And then I'm gonna show you how to uh, create an extended partition and three logical drives. So you have four two gigabyte put drives all up. So I've just gonna swap the floppy drive. Give me a sec. And in the next part, I'm gonna install Windows 98 SE. Um, from a CD-ROM drive. Now the computer I'm using is an old 486 from EXA. It doesn't support booting from CD-ROM and this software is actually pretty handy. It actually lets you boot from CD-ROM and uh, otherwise I couldn't install Windows 98. Now, a couple of compatibility uh, concerns. I tried using the software with four megabyte of RAM, it didn't work. With eight megabyte RAM, didn't work. 12 megabyte of RAM, didn't work. It needs 16 megabyte of RAM. Um, to load everything in memory and actually function properly. So here we can see that it picks up the hard drive. Um, the other compatibility had to do with the graphics card. It seems to load some high resolution graphics mode and on an ISA Tseng ET4000 AX it wouldn't work, it threw an error. So I swapped the card and I'm using one with a Western digital, digital chip, the WD90C31 which is a Speedstar 24X card, and that card worked fine. Okay, so it's asking us, but we're not gonna do that just yet. I just wanna show you some of the other options under utilities, for example. Um, it's very handy here. You can do, basically wipe the drive before you start. So let's do that. That's all done. Now in the BIOS, I configured the drive with 1023 three cylinders, 16 heads, and 63 sectors. I found that that always works pretty well. Okay, so the goal is to do a MS-DOS 6.22 installation. So let me just put my notes aside. So we click on set up your hard disk. It picks up that we have a, a CD-ROM, a DVD, it's a CD-ROM drive on the slave. So we're clicking on the eight gigabyte Seagate drive. Uh, we're just going to say it's Windows 98, but we're going to install DOS. Then we click on Advanced Installation. And here we can put together all the partitions that we want. And we're just going to add a single um, FAT16. And you can see how it adjusts it to the 2 gigabyte limit. And we we'll press OK. And we click on Next. And Next. And it's just going to I've prepared all. So now it's asking for boot disks. I'm just going to go to my floppy emulator and select the MS DOS 6.22 installation disk. Should be on number 18. So I'm using my floppy emulator. I've recently done a review on it. Very good product. You should definitely check it out, and I recommend getting one. So it's just copying the system files. Now this program, the boot times are quite long compared to the other versions. Um, it's also the only version that needs two disks. 
to okay so it's just gonna do a reboot we'll just put the floppy back and we're gonna go exit and we do a reboot and now I'll remove the floppy because I wanted to actually boot from the hard drive to load the disk overlay manager so yeah it's, it's it's one of the few that uses two floppy disks and it's definitely meant for uh, new machines so what have we got here here we can see the version 9.88 so we want to boot from the floppy so i put my floppy back in and switch it to the first disk of the dos 6.22 installation which is number 18 of mine and we're just going to press space to boot from the floppy And now we're just going to fast forward the installation. Um, it's a standard MS-DOS installation, so nothing, nothing fancy about that. Okay, so that's all done. Now I just want to check how much memory this overlay software uses. So I'm just going to remove some of the things in the startup files. This is exactly the same as in my last video where I reviewed the Western Digital Easy Drive. And we'll do another reboot. And then we have a look how much memory is left. And I don't know out of the top of my head what the Easy Drive had, but I'll just put it in the video and then we can compare it. Okay, let's have a look. So we have 606K or 620.432 thousand bytes. Alrighty, let's do a mem slash c slash p and see if there's anything that shows up. Can't see anything that says on track or Seagate software. Alrighty, now our two gigabyte partition is all working. What about the rest? So we just run fdisk. And we're gonna, you can see here's our primary uh, two gig petition. So we're gonna create an extended petition. So we're gonna go create petition, create extended petition. We go back. And it'll actually pick up that there's um, no logical drives. And all we have to do is press enter a few times and it creates um, three logical drives within that extended partition. That's it, escape, escape, and another, another reboot. Okay, and now all we have to do is format all three logical drives and that's going to take a while. So I'm just going to fast forward and then we'll shoot, uh, switch back to the video. Okay, and there you have it, all four drives ready to go, two gigabyte each. So it's up to you if you want to have a, a single two gigabyte partition or if you want to go with the extended partitions and three logical drives. Um, that, that's pretty much the maximum, uh, four two gigabyte drives in MS-DOS 6.22. Now whenever you start your machine now, you have two choices. You can press space to boot from a floppy or C to boot from a CD-ROM. I'm gonna boot from a floppy now and show you how to remove the Seagate uh, dynamic drive overlay again. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm not quite sure what this is. It keeps picking up something as a second drive, which is a bit weird. But what we don't wanna do now is uh, remove the drive overlay software and we just Select this option here. Go next. Next. Click next. And that should be done. And if we go back, that option should be grayed out. So that's all good here. Um, I'm just going to do another hard drive wipe for the next part of the video where we're going to install Windows 98. Okay, here we are in the second part. In this part, I'm going to create a 
SAT32 partition. So we're gonna use the whole drive, the whole 80 gigabyte, and we're gonna install Windows 98 SE from the CD-ROM. As I said earlier, the computer I'm using can't boot from CD-ROM, so this program will actually uh, help with that. Um, I forgot to mention that um, everything I'm doing in the video you can download from my, from my website. Go to philscomputerlab.com under storage and then dynamic drive overlay, or overlay software under Seagate. You need to run this program on an old computer, Windows 95 or 98, and it'll create the two floppy disks. I'm not sure if it works under Windows XP. Um, give, it a, give it a try. I think it should because in the menu it supports Windows XP, so I'd be surprised if it doesn't. Now, Windows 98 on this computer, uh, it'll be very slow. It's a 486 uh, DX running at 33 megahertz. I've upgraded the RAM to 32 megabyte. Um, graphics card is a very basic Speedstar 24X with the Western Digital WD90C31 chip. And that's pretty much it. And just a normal standard um, CD drive. So the goal is to use the Seagate Disk Wizard to create an 80 gigabyte FAT32 partition and then we're going to use the uh, menu pressing C to boot from the CD-ROM drive and then we're going to install Windows 98 but I'm going to fast forward all that so you don't actually have to uh, watch any of that. Okay so it's asking us do we want to set up the drive? Absolutely. So we'll click on yes. So we're just going to use the automatic uh, wizard this time. We're selecting Windows 98 SE. Click on next. Easy installation, absolutely. It's going to create an 8 gigabyte FAT32 partition. Click next. So let's have a look. It's going to take a while. A um, couple of other things. I'm using my new, well, new, I bought it last week, the Ava Media Game Capture HD2 in combination with the StarTech VGA to HDMI scaler. I've done a review on the scaler. You can find it on my channel or go to my website. I um, haven't done a review on the Game Capture HD2, but they're very happy for, with it. It's got a microphone input at the front, which I'm using. So um, it'll, it'll allow me to pump out videos a lot faster and not spend too much time with editing because I can just um, shoot everything in one hit. And then I just got to do the fast forward sections for the um, boring bits like now where we're just looking at a at a progress bar um, let me just think if there's anything else I have on my notes that I wanted to talk about I don't think so I think we covered everything oh yes in terms of maximum hard drive capacity um, 128 MIB is the maximum that Windows 98 supports uh, without any modifications or hacks okay so just gonna switch my floppy emulator to the Windows 98 startup disk Okay, let's do a reboot. Okay, so I want to boot from the CD-ROM drive, so I'll press the C key. And here comes my, I've got the Windows 98 SE disk in my CD-ROM drive. Now, I noticed an issue. Um, it, it, when it loads the CD-ROM drivers, it'll load some uh, SCSI drivers and it'll actually reboot my 486 so there's an option if you look at the bottom right of the screen shift plus f8 step by step confirmation so i turn that on and start windows 98 setup from cd yep. and then i just say yes to the things i need and all these other scuzzy drivers i'm just gonna go with no everything from here on just press yes Alrighty, let's go enter, continue replace zip, and that's it, this is going to take a while, um, it's a slow computer, so I'm going to fast forward the whole thing, and hopefully we've got a working Windows 98 SE installation on a 486DX33 with 32 megabyte of RAM. Okay, so it looks like my processor is too slow. Um, well, I've got heaps of processors and I really would like to see Windows 98 on this machine. So I'll be back 
with another processor. Okay, we're back with an Intel DX4 overdrive running at 100 megahertz, so it's a, it triples the clock speed of the bus from 33 to 100 megahertz, and hopefully Windows 98 will install now. Well, let's have a look at the hard drive. It should be uh, 80 gigabyte. So there you go. And look at the properties. 80 GIB. It's all there. And see if we can tweak the resolution a little bit. Okay, that's just as high as it goes. Let's try that. Ah, that looks like interlaced. Let's go 800 by 600. And I'm just gonna calibrate my scaler again. But yeah, there you have it. So, on an old 486 that had a uh, 504 MIB capacity bias limitation. We used the Seagate Disk Wizard to uh, install a FAT32 partition onto an 80 gigabyte IDE hard drive and successfully installed Windows 98 SE from the installation CD, which on the normal system is not possible because it doesn't even boot from the CD-ROM. So you have to boot from a floppy drive uh, and then load the CD-ROM CD -ROM driver that way. Okay, thanks for watching as always. Subscribe to my channel. Uh, check out my website, philscomputerlab.com. Hit the like button. Any comments, questions, queries, leave them down below and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can.